purpose of this video is to help homeowners do some basic routine maintenance on their hot water boilers for radiator heat. This is my uh, heater. It's a Lars JV series, JVS100, the S for Spark. 100 is the size series. It's going to be about 30 years old. I bought the house 20 years ago, and this was already here. I cleaned it about 10 years ago, and now it's due for another cleaning. What happens with these uh, things is you start to have a lack of free flow due to the byproducts of combustion. The uh, heat exchanger starts to get uh, fouled and the uh, jets of the manifold tubes get fouled too. Well, a quick thing to do is to inspect them uh, on this unit here would be to take the co inspection cover off and then you can take the tube out and you'd see uh, that they are corroded or clogged. If it's very badly corroded, you can buy new ones for about $15 a piece. You can see on this one there's four of them. One of them has a bracket on it to hold the pilot assembly onto it. The other three are identical. So you have one of one kind, three of the other. And you should be able to clean these and put them back in. But if they're fouled, that is usually an indication that your heat exchanger also needs some cleaning too. Um, in an extreme situation, you could have a lack of uh, flow through and you could have uh, uh, incomplete burning. You could even have exhaust gases uh, uh, come into the unit because they're, they're not flowing through your heat exchanger properly and getting up into your exhaust. You should make sure that your system in general is working. I mean, you should have an exhaust pipe that's clear of debris and a chimney that's also in good condition. Then what you need to do on this unit, well first if you see the how it works, you're going to get a call for heat from your thermostat. That's going to go to your logic circuit that's inside here. It's going to open a, um, your vent solenoid over there is going to open up. Then it's going to turn on your pump over here to pump water through the heat exchanger. And once those conditions are satisfied and the spark pilot light condition is satisfied, this valve will open up. You'll get a free flow of gas uh, through this rail, this manifold, going into these tubes. Then the heat from the combustion in the chamber is going to go through this heat exchanger. And then the exhaust gas eventually is going to be collected and put up through your chimney. And here's your gas line coming in. This is a clean out thing for any uh, impurities and sediment that comes through from your gas line that was plumbed in when this was done, I guess, decades ago. Then you have a cold water input with a, with a regulator to allow uh, regulated pressure of fresh water to come into the system if it's not completely filled to keep the system filled up. You're gonna have a dial here which will show the pressure, which should be under 20 pounds, and then the heat of the system. There's a couple of safety cutouts. There's a high temperature cutout inside the logic circuit over here. And then there's also a uh, high temperature uh, flame rollout switch here, just in case you have a condition in which you have um, blockages due to dirty heat exchanger or clogged corroded tubes on these manifolds. So what you want to have to do to clean here is you're going to need to unbutton the top of this unit. It uses a set of uh, sheet metal screws. In this case, these are 8 millimeter or 5 sixteenths. And you're going to unbutton the top and take the, uh, the top cap off. Once you do that, you're going to find a sheet of insulation. Remove that. Then you're going to find a secondary top. This control uh, covers the combustion. And when you find here, you're going to find a series of these caps which help control the uh, the flames coming up and direct the heat onto these heat exchangers. There was a wire coming across here that held the caps in register. So you take that out, they hook in on by either side. Once this is all off, you're going to vacuum this out. You're going to brush it gently with a brush. These are actually pretty uh, sturdy, but you still don't want to hurt these fins. Then you're going to want to spray them with some kind of water or descaler, like the kind you'd find in a coffee maker. Once you've got this cleaned out, and when you're do doing that cleaning, you're going to want these tubes already removed, and you're going to want some kind of blotter down there, like some newspaper, to catch the mess. But with a little patience, this thing can be very nicely cleaned. And then, once that's done, then you can put everything back together. You can go ahead and put 